All right, so this is a uh, somewhat hastily produced video. Please excuse the low production values. Um, primarily for the benefit of uh, those of you who are engaging in the C4D Cafe Texture This Challenge. Um, as you probably know, it's, uh, the challenge uses a model that was originally created in Roboto. And uh, I want to explain a little bit about the structure of that Groboto model and the mesh produced by Groboto and how that, how you can take advantage of that in uh, Cinema 4D. Here we see the model in Groboto. And uh, as you may know, and you can possibly see here, Groboto is a solid modeler. Um, it's, you create models by manipulating uh, booleans and simple primitives and uh, trim surfaces and those sorts of things, but you're dealing with true geometry, not a mesh, as you can see as I manipulate these various parts that form up the main body of Colonel Parrish's suit. Um, when this is converted into a mesh by Groboto, it takes the, all of the intersection seams, which you see outlined in black in this model, and converts them into mesh edge loops. So what you end up with, and I'm going to do the uh, mesh conversion here in just a second. Um, there's a bunch of settings here. We won't talk about this at all. That's not the point of this video. Just hit the preview button there, and you'll see the mesh appear in just a moment. So as I was saying, it creates a series of edge loops that surround patches, what we call patches, groups of polygons that were formed by those uh, primitive surfaces and their intersections. And I've highlighted those edge loops here, made them actually dark, so that you can see them more clearly. And as you can see, even though this is a, not an ideal mesh, it's a automatically produced mesh that actually has a very true high fidelity structure. It has these completely orderly edge loops, uh, multi-row, and you can set the number of rows, and of course you can set the density of the mesh on the surfaces and, and all those sorts of things. Um, here it's all relatively high compared to what you guys are used to working with, but understand that there's a, there's a reason for this. Uh, one is to maintain that really high fidelity um, quality of the surfaces and intersections, and secondly, uh, you, it's, it's useful to think about it a bit differently than you're used to. It's, it's a bit like a subdivision cage, but the elements of the cage are not the individual polygons, rather they are these patches and seams. So really you're working with a, still a very small number of humanly manageable elements that you can manipulate. Now here's that model imported into Cinema 4D. Now I'll mention that originally I exported this model for import into Modo, uh, and because of that its uh, settings were not really, the, the export settings in Grobato and the mesh settings were not optimized and ideal for import into Cinema 4D. But that's no big problem. There are still um, fairly simple and straightforward ways that we can get the most out of this mesh once we start working in Cinema 4D. As you can see, uh, one of the problems we have are some of these shading artifacts along some of these edges. Um, now, the first thing I will note is that this whole mesh was designed to be subdivided when it was imported uh, in Modo, and we can do the same thing in Cinema 4D. Specifically, we want, we want to use subdivide with hypernerves. And you'll notice that the mesh cleans up uh, rather remarkably when you do that. It's, it's still not perfect, and again, that's partly due to the uh, different settings used uh, for exporting, for importing to different apps but it's still a, a big improvement. Now, you may not want to do this before you start texturing, but uh, I would certainly suggest that uh, before you do your final render, you want to uh, subdivide the mesh. It will be uh, much cleaner. Part of that is because um, manipulations were made uh, in Modo as well as in Grobato, uh, specifically designed to interact and react with subdivision. If we look at this part of the mesh, it looks pretty ugly. It looks kind of pinched and strained, but that's actually all very in intentional because you'll notice, um, and we're looking at the unsubdivided mesh, you'll notice that when we subdivide it, that turns into a very sharp or a fairly sharp and very clean edge. And that's why the mesh was manipulated that way. It's, it's the typical subdivision uh, 
cage effect where the, uh, the, the properties of the cage influence how the uh, subdivision interpolation of the surfaces and forms uh, works out. So you can see uh, those uh, areas that were ugly in the um, original mesh, and we'll undo the subdivision again, here's another one of those kind of pinched looking areas, are actually, again, designed to uh, resolve into a very nice subdivided mesh. And this is true throughout the model. You'll notice that everywhere now um, things look kind of nice and smooth and clean and, 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 and detailed. So again, uh, uh, all a big improvement, but even this doesn't clear up all, all of those shading artifacts that we saw before subdividing. And that's because, as you folks well know, uh, Cinema 4D relies uh, a lot on Fong shading and Fong shading breaks to establish things like edges. And uh, Fong breaks, based on uh, sensing the angle of the uh, polygonal mesh, uh, is always a dicey business. You don't get exactly what you want. And fortunately, again, that's where the structure of Grobato's mesh comes in. And uh, we're going to go back to the original unsubdivided mesh and see how we can use that uh, seam and patch network structure to uh, clean up the shading. So here's that uh, particularly unattractive uh, shading artifact right there. Oh, and I'll point out, as long as we're looking at this, you can see that things are pretty faceted. And again, that was done that way in Grobato in anticipation of subdivision, making all of those forms smoother. But uh, back to the point at hand, if we go to the uh, edges mode and uh, specifically uh, loop selection, we can see that the uh, edge loops created by Grobato are there to be found and used. And here's the one that surrounds that patch, what we call a patch. Again, remember these are patches separated by edge loops. And uh, here's another one here. Uh, you can see the edge loops surrounding that patch. And what lies between those two edge loops, or outside of those edge loops, are those very orderly, uh, I mean outside of those patches, excuse me, are those very orderly uh, edge loops. So I select that loop there. and. Um, create a Fong break uh, as I stumble around here in Cinema 4D trying to remember where things are. There we go. And now you see that that surface uh, when smooth shaded is absolutely smooth and that's because even though that mesh may not look pretty and, or absolutely ideal, it is ideal in the sense that all of the points of that mesh on the surface of that patch are exactly on the surface of that patch as defined by the analytic um, quadric or the uh, uh, true surface from which it was generated. Same thing here, we can select that edge loop, um, break the Fong shading, and uh, I should have thought of it, uh, there's actually another loop we want to catch when we're doing that one, that would be the loop around this little joystick on his belly. Could have done both of these at once. In fact, you can do, of course, as many of these at once as you want. Uh, this is one of the things that uh, going forward we will uh, accommodate with uh, Cinema 4D. We will make these various uh, edges and uh, patches into predefined selection sets that can be uh, directly imported and into Cinema 4D. All right, so on to UVs. Um, so now that we have a kind of a, a overview of what this stuff is, you can see that our somewhat unusual UV maps, again, automatically generated, do contain, nonetheless, this same patch and seam network structure. And you uh, really don't need to be concerned with this at all if you are using uh, 3D paint or projection paint uh, with body paint. The great thing there is that you have a perfectly valid set of UVs and uh, you can just get started painting immediately. Uh, that said, the structure of the uh, mesh does provide a nice way to create masks for uh, controlling 3D paint in ways that can otherwise sometimes be arduous and difficult. Additionally, there are some things you can do by painting directly into this UV map. Um, all these little skinny things up here are seams. And that can actually be useful uh, in the form that it exists here in that you could uh, darken the seams, for example, to accentuate them or, uh, or make them look like they have grime in them or that sort of thing. 
And uh, similarly, I would say that, uh, again, I, 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 I certainly understand that some of you may want to uh, unwrap these UVs differently, but uh, it's not terribly difficult to work with and has some advantages. You take a patch like this, where that little joystick is located, one of those patches we were working on, and you can see that painting directly into this map using a soft edge brush to provide uh, a gradient for grime or wear uh, would be pretty easy because of the way the patch is isolated in this map. Uh, jumping back uh, just to conclude here, uh, one thing that I forgot to mention about these edge loops we were dealing with the edge loops that uh, define the edges uh, of these patches. There's also an interesting set of loops that define the center of the edge loop. And you can see those, you usually find them pretty clearly in these corners where several of them come together. Uh, the, the, the subtle difference here is that is the entire patch, if you will, uh, all the way to the center of the edge loop, as opposed to those loops we were using before, which are kind of the uh, outer edge, if you will, of the edge loop. So anyway, uh, I hope all of this uh, helps you a bit, uh, and we really do look forward to uh, getting a response from the uh, Cinema 4D community and doing what we can to make uh, Grobato and Cinema 4D work together as smoothly as possible. Thanks.